you well? Yes. Uh, my name's James. Uh, the more observant of you are probably spotted already. I grew up in a village. <laughs> my village has got a nuclear power station and no blooming hairdressers. <laughs> and the thing is, it's not fair, cos, like, a black guy with an afro looks damn funky. <laughs> a white guy with an afro, physics teacher. <laughs> so it's very nice doing stand-up. A lot of comedians get heckled on the stage. I'll be honest with you guys, I get heckled in the street. <laughs> it's true. I was in Bristol last week. I was at Bristol Parkway train station. Little kid, about ten. You know the ones that look like they were born in JD Sports? <laughs> they're not athletes, but they're running from something. <laughs> in it. He looks at me, this little lad, he goes, Hey, mate! You a train spotter? Hey, you a train spotter? I was so angry, I nearly missed the C591B. <laughs> little tinkers. So I wasn't showing off at the start. I did grow up in a village. I grew up in a lovely little village, about ten miles north of Bristol, called Inbredbury. So weird. But I'll tell you how weird my village is. The other week, I was walking through the woods and I came across a group of kids being chased by a middle-aged man in his underpants. <laughs> so naturally, I called the police. Turns out it wasn't a pervert after all, but a PE teacher who'd forgotten his kit. <laughs> what a village. The other thing you should know about my village is my village is the next village to someone called Russell Howard. And uh, the reason uh, me and Russ are quite similar is we've both got lazy eyes. Can you see that, madam? <laughs> I'll be surprised. I'm talking to you. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> it's the left eye that wanders. In fact, two years ago, in a bizarre twist of fate, I actually went out with a girl with a lazy eye. <laughs> it was embarrassing. We didn't know where to look. <laughs> I mean, in the end, it just got ridiculous, so we decided to go our separate ways and bumped into each other. <laughs> got them on. I live in London now. Uh, I live with my friend Dom in Tooting. I don't know if you've heard of Tooting. The estate agent described it to me as vibrant. <laughs> I think she's dyslexic. She meant to say violent. <laughs> I'll tell you how bad it is. I used to live in a flat above a kebab shop called Kebab-ish. <laughs> Even they're not sure what the hell's in it. <laughs> sort of like a bad night, innit? it? These days, I shop in Asda. I don't know if anyone here shops in Asda. Best thing about it, the reduced to clear section. The only problem is they keep moving it. <laughs> so what you have to do, you have to find the sticker man. You know the sticker man? And you just follow him around the shop, right? <laughs> it's like the Pied Piper of Hamlin. <laughs> and you get there, and there's all the cheap stuff, right? You know it's the cheap stuff. They've got yellow stickers and they say things like $4.99. Whoops, $1.99. <laughs> I love that. It's like they've made a mistake. <laughs> In Lidl, they've got a similar situation. They've got orange stickers on those as $4.99. Ah, sod it, 9p. <laughs> I love Lidl. If I actually got ID'd in Lidl, can you believe it? Admitted I was buying three litres of cider and some munch munch yogurt. <laughs> Tuesday night, I was treating myself. <laughs> so I I'm like in London, and the only thing is nobody speaks to you in London. I'm sure the people from outside will agree with you. Uh, first person to speak to me properly, homeless guy. <laughs> I'm sat in the park, reading a book, just reading a book, and a West Indian fella with massive dreadlocks came up to me with the best opening line I've ever heard. Comes up, he goes, Hey, Mark, if you don't give me a pound, I'll tell you the end of that book. Where were you when I was doing my GCSEs? <laughs> and he's a lovely fella. You guys would like him. He's called Bartholomew. And every time I see him, I always buy him a beer. But only get him one, because after one, he tends to get a bit mischievous. <laughs> I spotted him standing outside a DVD store, spoiling the to movies for money. And walking past, they could hear him go, Rocky wins. <laughs> Dumbledore dies. <laughs> Define Nemo. <laughs> and the cowboys bum each other. <laughs> I like the homeless people, they've had a hard time. It's the little kids that annoy me, right? 
I'll give you an example. This morning, I'm at my bus stop. One kid turned to another and went, yeah, because, like, back in the day, yeah? Back in the day? I said, what do you mean, back in the day? You're ten. <laughs> what you mean is last Tuesday. <laughs> right? I wouldn't say that to them, obviously. They're tough. I'll give you an example. I was in my local sports centre. I'm about to go for a swim. I'm just putting a coin in the locker. Little kid, ten, comes up to me and goes, Give me that powerful locker, man. Give me that powerful locker, locker, locker. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? No! I haven't got a bloody clue. <laughs> Why are you talking like that? You're white. <laughs> he looks at me, this little fetus. <laughs> he goes, give me that powerful locker, man. Craig David, Craig David. <laughs> give me that powerful locker or I'll stab you. What? You're ten! And you're wearing your swimming trunks. I thought, where have you hidden the knife? This is the best bit. His mum is obviously... He's got these red Bermuda shorts on. His mum has sewn a ten-metre badge. Oh. I'm thinking, you try and stab me, sunshine. I'm hiding in the deep end. Then <laughs> he put his armbands on, kicked the shit out of me. <laughs> Problem. So we've had riots uh, and the government don't know what to do about it. Who here is in favour of national service? <laughs> Nobody wants that. It's ridiculous, right? Because a lot of these kids are naughty enough as it is without giving them guns and the skills to use them. <laughs> I think the last thing we need is an army major in an inner city school going, Ah, good afternoon, children. I'm Major Carruthers. I'm here to instruct you in the art of urban warfare. First of all, synchronise your ringtones to Snoop Dogg, that bitch ain't shit. <laughs> Today's mission is to take over the top deck of a London night bus, in this case the N155 to Morden. <laughs> to do so, I suggest you use such intimidatory tactics as hissing, spitting and calling your mama a hoe. <laughs> That's right, a hoe. If successful, why not just rip up the seats, spill a few chips on the floor and tag the windows in Latin? Et tu, dizzy rascal. Et tu. <laughs> if successful, you'll be honoured with an asbo, so fix up, look sharp. 21 seconds to go, geezers dismissed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Very fun. Now, they say stroking a beard makes you look intelligent as long as it's your own beard. <laughs> if it's somebody else's, you're in trouble. Uh, this afternoon before coming on here, I decided to go a bit of clothes shopping. I tried on a pair of skinny, twisty jeans just to see what I'd look like with rickets. Just... <laughs> it's me with rickets. It's me with rickets. Now, I like a drink, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll tell you how much I like a drink. Last week, I found the alcohol at Vice Centre. I said, I've got a drink problem. They said, how can we help? I said, what wine goes best with Cocoa Pops? <laughs> Rosé, apparently. <laughs> so, uh... I've got, I've got a car, and uh, I don't really drive in London, not for eco reasons, I just don't want to lose my car parking spot. <laughs> it's outside my house, so I don't think I'm going to move it again. It's right outside Kebabish. <laughs> and I, I get paranoid on the road. I was on the M4 the other night, and I saw a sign that said, Tiredness can kill, take a break. I thought, that's all I need, death threats from Kit Kat. <laughs> I like the West Country homemade signs by the farms, you know, things like rotten manure, pound a bag. I've tried some. Good shit. <laughs> Who are? Now, I, I, the last time I went back to Bristol, I actually got stuck uh, in a road rage situation, right? Uh, what happened to me, I'm driving on quite nicely, uh, and a blue car decides to overtake me. Now, I don't know if you know much about cars, right? But those blue ones, pretty quick. <laughs> My little red one could not keep up. Now, I don't want to show off in the mean streets of Hammersmith that I was doing 37 in a 30. I didn't give a shit. Right? <laughs> Boom! Like that. Now, you guys have been looking at me for a while. I think we've all established by now, I'm the sort of geezer you wouldn't mess with. <laughs> if only because you don't know I'm looking. But at the traffic lights, this guy gets out of the car and he walks towards me. Now, this bloke's not like me. He's a proper man. <laughs> it's one of them blokes, you see him on a Saturday afternoon in the shops. Big body, little legs. <laughs> Usually bald. 
Big body, little legs. Now, I've never understood that look. Maybe they've been to the gym and they've just had time to do their top half. <laughs> Rawr! Oh, hello. <laughs> so, half Rambo, half Alan Carr, you know. <laughs> he knocks on the window, modern car, right? He goes, here, mate, what are you doing? I said, just got a bit excited. He goes, chill out, mate, have this. I look down, he's given me a spliff. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll be honest, guys, I don't smoke pot myself, but my hairdresser does. <laughs> Thought I'd give that to Raphael. <laughs> As I drive off, this strange guy waves to me, so I naturally wave back. Now, I don't know what the opposite of road rage is, but it can't be road love. Because that's dogging, isn't it? <laughs> that's the park and ride scheme we've heard so much about. <laughs> so I continue driving, I've got this spliff on the passenger seat. It's not the weirdest thing, I'm on the passenger seat. Uh, I drove to a party, wing mirror fell off. So being a practical man, I gaffer taped the side of the car, left the gaffer tape on the passenger seat. At the party, met a beautiful girl. I said, would you like a lift home? She said, yes. <laughs> like a gentleman, I opened the car door, she looks in, sees the gaffer tape. <laughs> sees me and thinks, bloody hell. I'm about to get bummed by screech from Saved by the Bell. <laughs> Now, you seem like a nice bunch of people. Now, give me a cheer. Who here in this room thanks the bus driver when you get off the bus? Yeah. My kind of crowd. Who here gets slightly annoyed when the bus driver doesn't acknowledge you back? Yeah. Exactly. I said toodle pip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a right. I was on the top deck three nights ago. I heard a businessman say the poshest thing I've ever heard. He went, Jeremy! We can't possibly play golf and go shooting. It's a logistical nightmare. <laughs> Anybody who's the word logistics in a social context is a dick, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and I knew he was a bit of a turnip because he had one of those pocket computers, right? Now, I don't really know much about computers, although my face looks like it does. <laughs> I was in PC World the other day. I was there for three minutes and five people asked me questions. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. Turn it on, turn it off. Put your dongle away. It's disgusting. <laughs> the only computerised thing I've got is a Kindle. I don't know if anybody here has got a Kindle. They're amazing. The reason I got it was uh, I saw a big poster at a, a, a train station. It said, the new Kindle, its pages turn 20% faster. I thought, Wow! When have you ever heard somebody say, I'm a really quick reader, me. What slows me down is turning the pages. <laughs> They're amazing machines. They hold up to 3,500 books, which is incredible, but you can only read one at a time, unless, of course, you do that fancy thing we do on the iPod. You know the iPod Shuffle? Or in this case, the Kindle Surprise. <laughs> you don't know what you're getting. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. We were southwest round Barst on the edge of the desert when the drugs were going to kick in, laughed Paddington and tucked into another marmalade sandwich. <laughs> oh. After 40 days and 40 nights, Mr Bilbao Baggins of Bag End announced, Oh, there's Wally. <laughs> Harry Potter was a very unusual boy. For one thing, he hated Nelson Mandela. <laughs> Gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Uh, take care. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you.